Hi everybody, this is Cam Cam from the future. So, just a little announcement and heads up here. This episode is absolutely riddled with technical issues, both video and audio. There are times where the video freezes and the audio keeps going, and then there were also times where both the video and the audio froze, and I was forced to just put video static in the place of it because it would be way too jarring just to leave all those jumps in there. Um, so I apologize for that. Also, this movie and the opening joke of this episode contain flashing lights, so if you are epileptic or prone to seizures, we recommend that you do not watch the movie and skip ahead to 1 minute and 29 seconds in this review. Thank you so much, and we hope you enjoy this episode of Cinema Roulette. Warning! We are about to spoil The Void. If you haven't seen the film and plan on watching it, then click away now. Or if you haven't seen it or just don't care, then please stick around. Man, these elder rich horrors are great. They love to fucking rave. <laughs> Everybody and welcome to Cinema Roulette. Hi, hi. So today we are doing a movie um, that I was going to go into. How could we confuse? That would that we that would require a title drop first. It would. So, um, but this is a horror movie. Yes, very much in the vein of John Carpenter. So I think I had actually heard of this movie before. I just never actually watched it. Mm. So. It was on a list of, like, underrated, like, cosmic horror movies or something, so... Also, if you hear anything, we're sorry. There are yeah. people upstairs, and they won't go the fuck to sleep, even though it's <laughs> almost 10 p.m. They're clump clomping around up there at, like, 10 p.m. <laughs> like, seriously, I don't know who the fuck is up right now, but they must be going over some serious life choices with how much uh, they're goddamn pacing. Speaking of pacing, let's talk about good pacing in The Void. Now, as I was going... Wait, wait. Huh? Wait, wait more. Oh, there, there it is. Okay. No, you didn't shut up. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Fucking hell, man. Yeah. <laughs> there it is again. Yeah, there it is again. <laughs> there she goes. All right. <laughs> so, yes, The Void. Um, This was a movie made in 2016, and it was not the only The Void horror movie made in 2016. <laughs> And there's also a short film, and there is another feature-length film called The Void. Basically, look for the uh, if you're on the YouTube version, look for that cover. Yeah, that one. Um, directed by I think I think that he had the last name of Giuseppe. We know, but I forget his first one. I do too. There are I two directors, the, and one is Giuseppe, and the other's name first name is John. So Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. His, his name, name is my name, name too. too. Also, again on the YouTube version, we have a video feed. Here's us. Fuck you. <laughs> so, yes. The Void. Um, banter noises. Banter noises. <laughs> we are having slight trouble wordsing right now. It's almost so. like someone's stomping the fuck around <laughs> up there. God. All right. So just, just go away with the snaps. Don't just take it away. Kitchen. It'll just, be too yeah. loud, guys. Oh, God. I know. I'm glad we're not in the kitchen. <laughs> Well, if we were in the kitchen, we'd tell them to fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, the way I found this movie is my brother showed it to me. Mm -hmm. that, that's all I have. <laughs> Actually, he had a film group in college. He showed this to them, and they were bored. Let me go through a synopsis real quick and uh, question why. Spoiler alert, they were wrong. They're, they're wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Like, okay, I can understand near the end it gets a bit slow mm -hmm. before everything goes to hell. But 
At the beginning, it sucks you in pretty quickly. Yeah, like, it's, it's Assault on Precinct 13, but yeah. a cult. But with creepy cultists and crazy monsters. Or Assault on Precinct 13 crossed over with Prince of Darkness. You can go mm -hmm. with that, too, if you want. Yes. I don't like Prince of Darkness. Ooh, uh, John Carpenter fans, be mad. I don't either, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's not that we hate it, it's just average. It's just... Anyway, we open with... Uh, Two people running out of a farmhouse. One is shot in the back with a rifle, and the other dude gets away. The There are two people shooting, and a girl was the one. Yeah, they just take a, can, a jerry can full of gasoline, dump it on her, and just burn her alive. That's fun. Um, the man who ran away runs into a cop of the small town. His name is Daniel. I will call him Danny because it's more fun. <laughs> and Danny's like, Hey, hey, kid, kind of drunk. And then he sees the blinds and is like, oh, fuck. Well, got to get him to the nearest hospital. <laughs> so they go to the nearest hospital. Sadly, the hospital is moving soon, so they don't have much staff. It's A lot of places are closed off and were destroyed in a fire. Yep. But not, I think actually, was it the precinct 13? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Like, it was damaged, but we, we know that was a direct reference. Oh, they're in the middle of packing everything, so that explains why there's not many people around. It's almost like it couldn't hire as many extras. Uh, so <laughs> it's like it was a very low-budget movie. Yeah. <laughs> Just like this one. It was crowdfunded. Yes, which it is was. cool. It's really neat. Um, but we got a good bunch of people here. We got Maggie. She's pregnant. We got Richard, the doctor. We got Allison, who used to be the sheriff's <gasps> wife. Uh-huh. And she also lost a baby. Uh, I, well, actually, no. They do go into great detail on how they lost the baby. Mm -hmm. Um, there's also someone named Beverly. She's another nurse at the hospital. I never got the one chick's name. Which one? Uh, uh, the one nurse who survives. Yeah. I didn't um, get her name. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I would look up a thing, but my phone's lying over there. So that would not require us to stop your flow. And I can't, uh... Yeah. Okay. Yes, I have a computer right in front of me. It's doing something at the moment. Leave me alone. <laughs> it's busy, all right? <laughs> but okay. Beverly. Uh, well, we also have another patient in here. And also, uh, Maggie has her uh, grandfather. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, there is a, another man here. He's just in the hospital. We never really find out why. Because Beverly stabs his fucking eyes out. Yeah! <laughs> just got And that... And we... And Daniel walks in on this. And Beverly has also cut off her own face. Like you do. She, she just... She just didn't like her face. I guess. Uh, Daniel shoots her as she tries to... Fight the fuck out. He sees weird shit, but that's fine. During the time he was passed out, oh, there's also an old doctor named Richard. Mm -hmm. He's kind of a dick, but... Just a dick. Um, when Daniel wakes up, there's a state trooper there who just happened to be nearby. Uh, and this is a small town. They, like, all know each other, so he's like, hey, what's up, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't you saying his name? We'll find out. Uh, <laughs> but... Daniel is like, hey, can I at least call this in? Because there's a lot fucking going on. People are shot. Well, there's two, two people dead now. Turns out um, the dude who was running away is thought to have murdered everyone in the farmhouse we opened up on. Kim was her name. Kim. Final check. Okay. <clears throat> Kim is the other nurse. Uh, and so just everything's gone to hell. Daniel tries to use uh, the phone in the hospital. Doesn't work. Fine. Places on renovations. Doesn't work. Goes to his uh, cop car radio. Nothing. Yep. And then there's just a dude standing in a big ass cloak with a tri black triangle on it. Who stabs the shit out of him? Yeah. Well, I don't stabs the shit. He stabs him once. Oh, shoulder, right. I'm so. thinking of later. Yeah. Uh, stabs him once. And more cultists show up. He runs back into the hospital. Is like, yo, shit's getting fucked out there. <laughs> um, we see Bev for a quick second, and her face is doing John Carpenter the thing things. But then she comes out as this horrific monster, and eats the state trooper. 
Um, also, hold on. No, before she appears as a, a big monster, the two people who shot uh, the chick at the beginning come into the hospital. The, no, hold on. Okay. You got this. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm jumping around a bit. Bev, as the monster, attacks the dude they brought in who is suspected of murdering everyone. And they save him. He grabs a scalpel without uh, Daniel or the state trooper noticing. They go back to the main room. The two people who were chasing the, the one guy show up. The father and who are father and son. The son is unable to talk due to cult related incident. Yeah, his knife was sla or his throat was slashed. You can see. So. Yeah. <sighs> the I'm just gonna call him the runner. <laughs> The runner takes Maggie hostage. The hunters are gay. Uh, the father and son cult hunters are mad at him because he was a cult. The runner was a cultist. And during all of this, Beverly shows fucking back up and grabs the state trooper. Everyone goes around to, to kill the fucking monster. Also, during all this, Richard, trying to calm down the runner, gets stabbed in the neck and dies. Mm-hmm. State troopers eaten. They kill the monster. <laughs> kill? Yeah. I mean, they eventually do because they set it on fire and put it outside the green. Oh, yes. <laughs> um. Then they're kind of stuck inside because the cult is now completely surrounding the hospital. Going, what the fuck do we do? <laughs> Daniel says, let's get the shotgun from my car. They go ahead and do that. Um. The son of the cult hunters it gets slashed up in the arm a bit, but it's fine. <laughs> Main problem right now, uh, Maggie's baby is coming in weird, so we need drugs, but drugs are on the other side of the hospital, and going alone right now with a building surrounded by cultists seems like a bad idea. Yeah. That's... I don't like his one line, are we in the same fucking building? <laughs> yeah, it's fine, I can go get it. No! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is like, oh, they just had to fight a few cultists. No, we've already seen a fucked up Eldritch horror. Yes. <laughs> But, and Allison is the one who wants to go get the drugs because she's like head nurse and knows what, what the fuck to do. Mm -hmm. And also really wants to save the baby because she lost her baby. So she doesn't want to lose another baby. Yeah. Connections. So she, she has that trauma. Uh, and while they're going and getting the shotgun, she goes and tries to get the meds anyway. Richard's alive. He, and grabs her. Mm-hmm. And turns out Richard is a cultist because they come back in, go looking for her and just find in his office like, oh, this is cult stuff. And then he calls him up on the phone. It's like, yo, <laughs> cult stuff. <laughs> yo, this is totally some cult stuff. Because <laughs> uh, Richard also lost his daughter and this Eldritch cult will allow him to see the daughter or bring her back. Yeah. <laughs> and she offers this... And he offers the same thing to Allison. Uh, well, not offers. We find out he kind of forced it and she just goes with it. Yeah. Because she's tied down. Um. And then is. Is that picking up in the audio? Yes. Mm. It, it did kind of sound like a scream, though, so I was wondering if I could use it at the beginning. So. That's a washing machine. Oops. That is a washing machine. Oh, well. <laughs> that part could have been cut. We'll see. Eh. <laughs> it's fine. It's just the elder tours around us. You should stop playing those into the casino. Yeah. The casino you can clearly see we're in. Yes. On the YouTube version. <laughs> Hi. The casino with no name. Uh, look at our wonderful drapes. Anyway. <laughs> uh, it's basement time. The, the two cult hunters and Daniel are going down there and everyone else is staying up with the baby. What was the chick's name? Kim. Kim. Kim is the only nurse up there because, you know, uh, Bev decided to go be an elderich being. Fucking yeah. idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Rude, first off. <laughs> but the trio goes into the basement and then find that there's a new basement. So they go to super basement. Yeah, because uh, Kim's talking to them on the radio and they're like, is there another set of stairs, like a sub basement? She's like, what? 
no, there was never a sub basement. <laughs> well, there was, and this sub basement is full of Richard's experiments, which are just a bunch of monsters, a bunch of fucked up beings. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> oh Jesus. Uh, monster fighting ensues. The baby starts to be born, and Kim freaks the hell out because t- what the hell do you do when you're a new nurse? Yeah. Like, she's just out of med school, Literally, so... Literally, like, she's still learning the rope. She still doesn't know. Like, she's never performed a C-section before and all that, so... And she's about to do it. Um, Maggie's grandfather is even like, You are the only one who can do this. It's your sheet. Everything dies or you give them a chance. And then he dies. His throat slit by Maggie. Mm-hmm. Because it turns out that kid is Richard's. <laughs> that's so gross and, and and this person is very clearly underage like, yeah she is a child like even the one uh, col- the father yeah the one call guy he calls her a uh, a teenage slut yeah so. <laughs> even makes a fucking joke on it Ugh. but uh <laughs> hold on I'm trying to place where we are the cult is already breaking into the hospital Kim goes and hides. We actually find out she'd like fucking smash a cult member's head in with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> yeah, pretty rad. <laughs> Even though there was an axe right there. <laughs> it's easier to swing. Yeah. Uh. Uh, Dan finds Allison. Uh, she is just cthulhu Yeah. And in, and she keeps doing sort of a deadite thing of showing a fake image of herself, like just join us. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daniel says no to that shit and just chops her up with an axe. Just straight up, yeah, murders her and the baby. So, <laughs> well, I, it's not a baby. <laughs> uh, whatever the hell it is, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, one of my notes is just Dan doesn't want kids. <laughs> Dan didn't want kids. <laughs> Because the one doctor, dude, he even, like, teases him. He's like, I didn't sense sadness. I sensed relief when your child died or something. Uh, but then Dr. Richard, now with, uh, now just being a Hellraiser, be, yeah. uh, Cenobite. Cen- he does look very much like a Cenobite, yeah. Basically a Cenobite at this point. Uh, talks to Dan and you a little bit. Then Maggie stabs him in the back as they go through the birth. And... Richard gets his daughter back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also known as the Resident Evil Eldritch fucking horror. Oh, yeah. Just bursts out of her stomach and like it's fucked because it's like it never separates it, like drags her along as like. <laughs> oh yeah, it's fucked. <laughs> um, the cult hunter kit uh, son comes in and starts starts shooting at. Also, at, I passed gas. I apologize. Rude. <laughs> shoots at the daughter and uh, kind of distracts her, eventually setting on fire and killing it. Mm-hmm. it. His dad sacrifices himself in order to kill the yeah. dar. Because it's shown that the guy had thrown he had flares with him earlier. So Yeah. And uh, the dad picked up uh, alcohol, mm-hmm. rubbing alcohol, not drinking alcohol. Yeah. I guess you can drink it. It's just not <laughs> advisable. I'm pretty sure it was, like, Thomas Jefferson's wife or something, or one of the president's wives that had such a horrible, crippling alcohol addiction that, like, when there was no alcohol around, they tried to drink rubbing alcohol and nearly died. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Because that shit's not... Yeah, you can't do that. Now I'm thinking of uh, Archer when Miss Archer mixes rubbing alcohol with orange tang. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, but that all happens. Dan gets close enough to... Richard in order to tackle him into the void causing this close uh because he did a uh, he did a cult thing and he did cult the, shit it opened yeah <laughs> it opened the titular void uh oh that's how Adar dies because she doesn't burst into flames and keeps chasing the sun he runs out of the super basement before everything closes because the portal closed yeah. and the walls crush her the walls crush her she, he goes and finds Kim and they both escape uh, Daniel and Allison are just in the void. They're just stuck in the void forever. So it, it's like this endless landscape with a big flowing pyramid above, and that's it. Yeah, ends very ambiguously. <laughs> so that was the void. That was, in fact, the void. <clears throat> very, very enjoyable, very well done horror movie, and I am, I was blown away at how good it was for such a low budget. 
Oh my god, I was blown away. For such a low budget, the practical effects are fan-fucking-tastic. Every headshot, every fucking oh. monster is disgusting. God, it was incredible. Like, there's there was only one or two effects that didn't really hold up. The only ones I can think of were the axe, how, how rubbery it was. Oh yeah, because he to stab Richard with the axe and the before pushing him into the portal it's just stuck on him and it's kind of wobbling around yeah and then the other one was um Allison's pregnant belly didn't work yeah but you see that for like three seconds yeah but it's just they are so solid and the crazy fucked up you're thinking of Maggie's belly Maggie sorry Mm -hmm. so but yeah and just how fucked up and like big they got that must have been a bitch like for whoever did the acting in it to move around in like those big ass like suits or I love the, because we do find out that the fire that happened at the hospital was the creations in the basement trying yeah. to kill themselves. Yep. Because <laughs> they can't die. They, We find this out pretty quickly because there's a dude with a hole through, like yeah. a fist sized hole through the center of his face just slamming his head <laughs> into a pipe. That was fucking incredible, that effect. Because he slams it in and it like, goes through his head, but every time he pulls out, you can see like like the blood and shit like uh, and then he turns out. to the camera yeah. and you see straight through it uh, it's so fucking cool like all those crazy beings in the basement that was all just so well done and disgusting my god ugh and Luckily, the way they bleed and sometimes like pus comes out of them and shit it's grody oh that <laughs> hell the I the uh starting kill of the eyes like that was <laughs> yeah. just holy fuck right my god like it lets you know right away bam gore we are rated r motherfucker (laughs) yeah and that's the thing like oh my god so yeah the the effects are ridiculously good they are better than like a lot of mainstream horror movies yeah just because you know good practical effects are so fucking good like that's the thing like see i I know that was i I know you know what i was trying to say yeah i know what you're trying to say but you fucked up and just became redundant yeah but it's like, because it, it, you can use CG to enhance the practical effects, but if you have a really good practical effects guy, then, man, because I, I, and obviously, like, you know, they were like, we're doing John Carpenter, and we're attributing to the thing, kind of, we have to do it practically. Like, yeah, <laughs> there's no other option. Like, John Carpenter made one of the most famous practical body horror movies of all time. So both of Beverly's face effects, like when she was chopping off her own skin, you mm-hmm. see it, fl- even though it's mostly in the dark, you see it flapping uh, as she talks, which is just yeah. vile. Uh, <laughs> or when she, um, when we see her starting to transform and get infected, there's like tangles she coming out of her eyes. eyes. Oh, it's so gross. <laughs> and the skin flaps are also like wiggling yeah. as she wakes up. Oh my God. It's incredible. Yeah, and the final transformation of of the, who was the person who got crushed was that? Uh, that was Richard's daughter. Yeah, like just her her you can see her off of her face, but like this, like that whole that shit coming down, like when he shoots her, that looks. Oh yeah, like it destroys her lower jaw yeah. or whatever. <laughs> or the one in the hallway where like her skull pops out or whatnot. Uh huh. <laughs> like, oh. God, I can't praise that enough. It's just, it's so well done. And there's one of the main draws of this movie. If you love gore and practical effects, check this one out. Yeah. Or because the infected try to infect other people and like tendrils yeah, like, come down sh- from where their mouth is and you see it like go into the person's skin or in uh-huh. uh, for the state trooper, you see it oh, go yeah, like, into his eyes. And it never stops going. It, it always is going sh- sh- like it's oh, disgusting. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, all of that is really fucking yes, cool. Absolutely, and they use it to at great length in the movie. Like, and and the cinematography absolutely helps with the practical effects. They use the use of lighting and color is really well done and just enhances all those scenes. I will <laughs> say, I wish they strobe light less. Yeah, especially that one scene. <laughs> the one scene where they kill Beverly. That was too much. <laughs> yeah. You can actually kind of see it fuck with the digital reading. Like, you see it, instead yeah. of going completely black, it, like, flashes green for some yeah, reason. Yeah, it's interesting. Because it obviously was shot digitally, so. Yeah. And for an indie film, it's shot really well. Like, you can yeah. still tell it's indie, but they have a lot of really good camera angles. Yes, whoever they got to do cinematography you did a fantastic job at hiding how low budget it was, so... <laughs> Um, but yeah, and, and if, you, if you have epilepsy, don't watch this movie, I'm just saying. Like, uh, I, it's pretty I can't, bad. in good conscience, tell you to watch yeah. the movie then. That's 
Like, yeah, we can't just say, like, you know, skip this, because there is a lot of strobe lighting, so... There is. Yeah. My, uh, my one friend, really good friend that I knew from college, Nancy, she had epilepsy, so... Mm. <laughs> uh, also, like, some cool shots, uh, when he... When Daniel kills his wife, and it's just a slow zoom out from the... And all you see is his silhouette in the doorway, <laughs> chopping down the axe. Yeah, that was cool, so... <laughs> Or just, like, the special effects, uh, the glimpses you see of the void, like, the other world. Yeah. Like, those are just really cool, and they look really solid. I'm sure those were CG, but... <laughs> or matte paintings of or some matte sort. Or matte paintings, but yeah. I love the one where it's, like, the cosmic gas. Like, you can see it, like, going like that. And, like, the, the pyramid coming down, like, into the clouds. That was so intimidating. I love that. Also, the set design's really good when they're yeah. in the super basement. So many Silent Hill vibes. Oh, oh, God, yeah. Like, it's, like, red lighting, and, like, they have, like, the gurneys with the dead bodies all over them, and, like, just shit on the wall. It's just great. <laughs> yeah, like, it look Well, first off, it's burned to ash, but then when you get to the monster area, it has that very industrial red yes. feel that uh, the other world in Silent Hill has. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um... I guess we should talk about characters at some point. I guess so. Um, <laughs> this is kind of a thing situation where yeah. the characters are fine. It's mostly about the effects. Yeah. I just want to say, too, though, um, the fact that this was a high school, they did a good job disguising it as a hospital. Yeah. So just the set design in general was really well done. Um, but, yeah, the actors all do a good job of what they're given. So <laughs> I, um, Daniel, after he first kills Beverly... Mm -hmm his honest reaction of like being really shook up that he had to murder someone he knew. Yeah. That, that was really good acting. He is. I, I felt he did just throughout did a fantastic job. So, cause he's, you know, our lead character. So yeah, I guess <laughs> there are like a few lie reads where someone goes too high or sounds yeah. kind of too just out of it. Mm -hmm. I also did like too whenever shit was going crazy, like everyone just constantly trying to calm people down. Like, constantly. Like, just, it's okay, it's okay. Hey, 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 hey. We're everybody. in a really bad situation <laughs> yeah. right now. We do not need yeah. this. Like, when shit starts escalating, it really does feel just very chaotic. Like, when the uh, two cult guys, when the two guys first come in or whatever. Uh-huh. Like, and they're just pointing their gun and, like, he has the knife against the throat. And they're like, ah, shit's going crazy. It just does feel super chaotic. Like, huh. <laughs> also, a twist with uh, Maggie. That just felt like... That was a good twist. That was. Yeah. Because so. you didn't think about, like, oh, no one asked who impregnated her. Like... Yeah, like, it, it was it was fucked up, but it was good. So. Uh. <laughs> no, I'm trying to think here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the music's getting too. Adds to the atmosphere. Oh, yeah. So. The music was super solid. Yeah, whoever did the score. There were multiple people who did the score in the credits, including, I think, the directors. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's so, like, because, like, the, the two guys who started out with the music, their credit went by super quickly. And it was by this person and, okay, next person. <laughs> next person. You did one song, you get one second. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're paying you by the song. <laughs> <laughs> uh. hmm. yeah, I don't think that's enough either. <laughs> but, I don't know, I'd feel bad just kind of trying to milk more out of this. I know, but I'm trying... Because it is honestly super solid. And the it is. Like, if you need a John Carpenter throwback, mm -hmm. this is a really good one. <laughs> they, they respect the genre. Uh, also, just having that ambiguousness. Because John Carpenter has that a lot the more you think about it. Oh, yeah. He has a lot of very ambiguous, kind of almost nihilistic endings to a lot of his movies. So <laughs> Yeah. Isn't that what the Apocalypse Trilogy is? Like, yeah. It's always an ambiguous ending for those? Yeah. Same way. Yeah. Like, the, for, the Thing is a famous example where they're like... The thing has a nihilistic ending. That's all you need to know. Go watch the thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it captures that. I do like it's ambiguous. Yeah, like it's never said this is this cult's name or whatever. It's just it's the cult that worships whatever fucking eldritch horror this is. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it reminded me a lot too of like Event Horizon, for example. So especially towards the ending. <laughs> that makes sense. But. Yeah, I just, I love that. And I, I do just love cosmic horror. Like, that that ending, I just really, really love that last part. <laughs> Where it's the one dude just spouting, like, these crazy mystic nonsense and shit. It's just, I like that. We can live forever! Yeah. <laughs> I 
I like how he doesn't react to his daughter fucking being burst into flames or whatever. He's just kind of like, well, shit. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, definitely check out this movie. <laughs> the Void from 2016. Yes. No, not that not, one. Uh, the, the other one. Yeah. That one. Not that one. No, wait, that's a short film. The oh, other shit. One. Yeah, no, the, that one right there. This one. That one. At, so. <laughs> Easy to find Blu-ray. Yeah. Probably so. on Shudder. I wouldn't be surprised. That wouldn't surprise me either. So, I think it is time. Yeah, that's probably. Yay. Three more movies left. Three movies left. Lucky number seven, Mandy, and Heathers. Mm-hmm. That. No. <laughs> I didn't say let us because that's usually what okay. I say before okay. I say the, the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Before I'm like, I'm usually like, let us. <laughs> Just do it. Please. Spin. 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 Oh, thank God. Thank fuck. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I actually really wanted this one because I didn't want it to end movie month. Next is lucky number. I don't know how much we're going to have to say on this one. <laughs> we'll see. Yes. Maybe this is shorts week because this is a rare short episode. Yeah. Oops. We're giving them extra episodes this month. Yeah, anyway, I'm not doing so. a double thing. <laughs> no. Yeah, even if it does come up short, it's more, we're giving, we're producing more episodes, so I don't feel bad about if, if it falls short. Like, I, I know we did that with uh, last movie month because we had Lone Wolf and Cup 3. Yeah, but... But uh, that's because we wanted to have another episode, so you didn't have to listen to that one. Yeah, because we did a bad job. That movie is fucking bad. It's just fucking vile. So, it's bad. And Unlike yeah. the Void. 